topic we'll talk about uh, sales scripting and uh, the one way uh, which helps me to automate uh, each and every uh, time when it comes to a CLA component or uh, you know any executing a repeated command and that too with a dynamic uh, value in it so we won't go deep into like each and every components like if loop for loop and stuff which you might be already knowing it or you can easily google it of like uh, what is syntax for if condition what is the syntax for for loop what is syntax for while loop but what we'll be focusing today is more around how we can put it into a real time use case and uh, if you feel this valuable and if you need a deep dive on uh, the sales script let me know then we can do a follow up session around like each and every component as the as in detail so to give a quick introduction about the sales scripting itself if you are going to run a command like say for example let's say i want to do a go hi then it's going to print it out and uh, if you want to read a file then you would use a cat command if you want to create a file then you are going to use touch for example if i do tft is going to create a touch file let if i can output a file or i can output i can write it to a file for example i can do echo hi and then rather displaying it i can store this one into a file called and i can read what are the files which is the current directory i can use it ls to see like what files exist in my directory current directory to read the content of the file i can use a cat abc.txt it's going to give us the content of the file if you want to add one more line to it so let's say i can do like echo for example the world and then instead of using a single bracket if i use the double greater than bracket and the abc.txt it's going to append one more line to the existing file so these are the generic basics like how you would play with it and you can also pipeline it for example i can say cat abc.txt and then you can see like wcf and l like how many lines or like what total word count so you would be pipelining the output into the another command to read it so these are the generic basics for when it comes to the cell commands right which most of you would be knowing it so let's put it in action in a way of how do i uh, need to do it in a multiple or multiple lines right so in cases like we have run multiple commands like echo hi touch and if you want to co- combine two things how can i do it let's say i want to do echo hi and then echo world how can i do it so then you can use things like echo hi and then you can use and operation like it is and then you can use echo world so it's going to pre- uh, execute the first command and then it's going to execute the second command but what will go like if you are going to do like 10 lines or 20 lines you can't keep on adding like and 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 so that's where we move into a, a scripting file or a cell file and it's going to end with an extension called dot sh so to create it we can use touch command to create a file and let's say i name it as script.sh it can be anything and then to edit it i'm going to use a vim editor and now here you can give as echo hi and then you can go into the next one as echo world and you can save the file now to execute the file all you would need to do is just slash and the file name we are, we are going to provide it so now if you see when i tried executing the file we got an innocent denied one to make the file executable because we are trying to execute a file to make the file runnable we want to provide a permission to do that use a command chmod followed by the file name so now we provided the file the permission to make the executable part so now if i just do the same thing again uh, you see the file got executed the commands were executed and we got the output as hi and world so initially we saw if it's like one or two lines we made it like and and then if going to like n number of lines uh, you can move it to this approach of uh, moving it to a file make the file executable and then uh, you can execute the file directly by calling the specific file so now let's talk about more use case uh, how uh, this can be helpful when it comes to running cli commands right so for this use case i'm going to talk about uh, let's take an scenario of i am and uh, if you see we would have seen already made a video about uh, how to use the cli commands itself right so for example if i search for a uh, uh, list so then we have list as keys list groups so let's talk about a scenario of list groups so what is the syntax for that we are going to use aws space i am space list groups right so let's say if i want to list all the groups in my account what you would generally do you would go like aws i am and then list groups and then it's going to uh, list all the i am groups as part of my aws account right it sounds simple okay what's the matter of it and now let's say you want to just need the group name of the each group 
So what we can do, we can combine it or we can pipeline it and then you can combine a tooling like jQuery, right? And then you can read the JSON file. So if you see like I tried doing the jQuery factor and you can see it's going to come under the groups. So let's say I want to list all the groups part. What I can do, sorry. So what I can do, same command, I can say dot groups. So then within the JSON format, it's going to read all the groups. And if you see where we are, so within the groups, let's say I want to do grip group name. So now we got all the group name, which are part of our account. And then you can further strip down into like more of the things. So now you can ask me like, what is again the matter of it, right? So we tried using a single one, and then you are going to, we tried jQuerying it, and then we are trying to fetch the values of it. So in real world, it's not just going to end with fetching the group names, but then you're going to again go deep into it to get what permissions the things uses, right? So let's again talk about our scenario. So what are the options available in the I am part? So let's say we'll go with the groups itself. So you have Okay, so we have list group policies, we have list groups. Do we have discrete groups? Okay, and talk about list group policies. So what is going to do? We want to provide the list group policies followed by the group name we want to provide, right? So in this case, if I go with, let's say, list group policies, am I right? Yeah, list group policies. And and then let's say you want to do the group name. The group name as demo, for example. So now you get a value like it has no policies in it, right? So in scenario, like if you want to see the same thing for all the three things, right? We can't write script for or do the same action, like do the same thing for SA underscore group and fetch the details and then do the same thing for TPI and demo and do the details, right? It's going to be like, if it's like hardly three, four, five, it's going to be easy. But in real world, it's going to be like hundreds and thousands you're going to talk about. And though you use CLA options to avoid going into the console and fetch the details of each and every policies, we want to still optimize further to make our work more efficient. That's where the scripting comes into picture. And since we are using the CLI, uh, which is close to the cell scripting or the Linux terminal, the cell scripting can come very handy comparing to other tools like Python or SDK. It's not mandatory to go with this way, but it can come very handy for such kind of task using the querying factor since it comes with JQ and we can make our life more easy. So now, as you could see, our command is going to remain the same to fetch it. All we're going to do is change the parameter of the group name to fetch uh, each and every uh, details. Let's try to store it in a file. So let's say we'll keep it as touch maybe group name dot txt and let's run it to the one. So if I try printing it out, now we have all the group name from here. So as I said, if you're going to do like one time, you can do this sublink process at middle and get it done. In case if you're going to do like repetitive, you can spend more time on it, like directly to write it to a separate file called groupname.txt. Again, it's a matter of cell script. We're going to use advanced options like SED to strip these values and stuff. To make it simple, I just took a manual intervention at middle place to do the specific action and get it stored as a file. Now comes the part of how we can loop it and then replace the value of it, right? So each time we're going to just replace demo and uh, SA underscore group stuff. So for which I'm going to, let's go for our script, which is the script file itself. And let me delete whatever exists. So what we're going to do, let's do it in the parallel process. So what I was trying to do, let's write the script and then we'll try to do like in parallel what is going to happen, right? So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to read all the group name in it. So if I read it, it's going to come as part of the value, right? So I, I'm going to read it. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm going to use a while loop. So if you see like, uh, if I'm reading the file and whatever the output the file is giving me, I'm going to pipeline it to the next command. So for example, if I do like WC and L, then it's going to say like, okay, this file is consist of three lines in it, right? So now what we're going to do here is, I'm going to pipeline it and then going to do a, a loop part. 
So uh, the preferred loop I use here is a while loop because uh, it can run uh, till the line exists. Uh, you can also use for loop uh, based on your uh, uh, use case. And what we are going to do is we are going to read the each line and then uh, you can we are going to store it as a specific uh, variable or specific uh, value in it. So what we are going to do, we are going to read it. Once we read it, what we are going to do is we want to say what action to be performed. So you can say like do, for example, and then you would need to use a specific action. So here again, you can use something like a variable part of it. So how the variable is going to use is same as like a variable name and then the value. So here, if you talk about the script itself, what we are doing is we are reading the file, whatever the output we got out of the command, we are putting into a loop. And then, so here the group itself is a new variable. So which means whatever it came line by line, it's going to be considered as a loop. And then for each loop, the variable value is going to be changed. For example, the first loop, the group value will be as demo. And then for the second loop, it's going to be of SA underscore group, likewise it keeps on going back. Okay. So what we are going to do, we are going to execute the command. So let's say what we need, we need a policy. So we'll keep the variable name as policy here. And then we will start executing the command. Uh, so do that. Right. So this is the command we are using. We were using AWS, I am, list group policies, and just the group name is going to vary. You take whatever the commands you want to run it, you move it over here. And then here we want to replace the group name value. So as I said, for each loop, it's going to store the variable as this one. To refer a variable within the script, you would use a dollar symbol and then the variable name. So here the variable name would be group and you can just say group part and we can close that executional stuff. So now once this piece is done, you can use the semicolon part, but I just repeat what I was doing. So the syntax for the while loop is you need to do a while and then condition, then you do a do action. And then once the loop is done, you need to mention done part. So in our case, what we are doing is we are reading the file, cat, and then whatever the lines in the file, we are going through as a loop here. So when we say like while read group, it's roughly translates like each line as stored as the variable called group in it. During the first loop, the first line would be stored. In the second loop, the second line would be stored. So it enters the loop and then the syntax is do. And what we are doing is rather directly just running the command, what we wanted to do, we were storing the output of the command in a new variable called policy. So when here we're talking about two variables, one is the group and two is the policy. So you can keep any name for it. You can call it wash and you can call it foo, whatever it is, it's just a variable naming. You try to keep it as sensible so that anyone in future, if they read it, they can understand it. So now we are passing the command, what accent to perform. And since we see in the previously that the only one variable which is changing, it's called group. So we are changing that as a variable and then to get us whether the command is success or not, we use the standard echo part to print what is the policy we got. So one flaw in our previous script which we written is, when I execute this, it gives the policy attached, but we are not aware this policy belongs to what. So what we can try to add is we can say, echo, you can say dollar group, and, and then followed by the policy. So now it would give us the group name followed by the policy name. Uh, you can also store the output in a file, let's say policy.txt. So now the whatever you have seen, it's going to get stored into a file. And if you read the file, it's going to get stored here. Now, since we have the, you know, working script, we can exactly copy this and uh, we can write it in our script.sh and if I save it and then let's say we'll remove the file whichever we added as policy.txt and if I tried uh, script.sh the script is going to execute and whatever uh, it's going to run here it's going to run at the back end and then uh, if, uh, if we type uh, the policy.txt we are going to have the same output over here. So you can, if you want to build an API kind of thing, you can even, you know, format it to provide it as a JSON based approach, like something like group, semicolon, and then policy, comma, so that it will form a specific JSON wise, and then even you can use it to jQuery it further. So this serve you can, in general, you can, you know, 
combine each and every logic of the self scripting and try to come up with your own use case and so the script which i'm currently showcasing to you it literally works for almost of any use case wherever you have a dynamic variable in place and you would just need to change the variable part so yeah, i thought this would be like helpful for you and there is one more thing if you're going to run the spe specific cell script in a, a vc2 or centralic place like where other cell languages are there so here we are writing in bash so you would need to also declare like what language you are writing in so for which you would use c band as a syntax so you would use hash followed by exclamatory slash bin slash bash so whenever you would use this line to declare like what language your script is running on you would clearly see like for example of when you are running and you know in, while booting the each two instance that would be option to perform the commands to execute so on such kind of scenarios this would be mandatory to let the instance or let the machine which is running your script knows what your script is based on so that it can choose the right cell if there is multiple cells used in the machine and that will help you to differentiate it so any doubts so far